Questions for Reflection The early followers of Jesus were faithful Jews or converts to Judaism. Before they were called Christians in Antioch, and this is in Acts chapter the 11, the early followers of Jesus Christ were often referred to as the Way. The Apostle Paul, in recounting his own conversion, speaks of having persecuted this way. That's Acts 22, prior to his encounter with the risen Lord on the road to Damascus. This expression, the way, reveals a profoundly important aspect of the understanding of the early Christians. They believed and proclaimed that following Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah, meant a new way of living. But it was a Jewish way, with following all of the dictates of the Mosaic Law. Now they're hearing reports that the Gentiles, those who were not Jews, were accepting the Word of God and being converted to the Lord and baptized. And Peter, already viewed as the chief of the apostles, was visiting with them and sharing meals with them. Some objected, insisting that these Gentile followers would first have to be circumcised and follow the Mosaic Law in every detail, including the dietary laws. In this profoundly important passage from the Acts of the Apostles, Peter explains his encounter with the Holy Spirit and his vision, which called into question the obligations of the old law and the dietary restrictions. Also, he explained that the same Holy Spirit which descended upon them at Pentecost was being poured out on the Gentiles. Then he places the encounter within the promise Jesus made to them. Peter said, I remembered that the Lord had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I realized then that God was giving them the identical gift He gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And who was I to stand in God's way? This account satisfied them, and they gave glory to God, saying, God has clearly granted to the Gentiles too the repentance that leads to life. The same Holy Spirit's being poured out today on the church and in and through the church. The church is the body of Christ, called to go into all the world and continue preaching His good news. Do we experience the power of the Holy Spirit in our own lives? Do we pray to the Holy Spirit? Do we ask for the Holy Spirit to speak to us and guide us? We can, we should. Come Holy Spirit and fill the hearts of your faithful. The beautiful words of the Psalm of David, which is our response at today's Holy Mass, were pronounced for centuries at the beginning of every Holy Mass, at the foot of the high altar, in Latin. Intro ebo ad altari dei, the priest would say, and the server would respond, a deum qui letificat juventutu me. In English, I will go unto the altar of the Lord, the Lord of my joy and gladness. Is the Lord the source of our joy and gladness? Do we experience joy and gladness? Remember, the word translated gospel in English literally means good news. Are we living in a way which gives testimony to the fact that living for Jesus Christ brings joy? St. Paul, a man who was certainly well acquainted with difficulty and suffering, told the early Christians, and he tells us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give Thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. That's 1 Thessalonians 5. Did he mean it? Yes, he did. This was a man who understood that the gospel really is good news and that those who know Jesus can experience true joy. Do we? A priest friend of mine many years ago told me to see joy as an acronym. J-O-Y. That stands for Jesus over you. That, he said, is the way to experiencing Christian joy. The imagery of the shepherd, the sheep, and the gate, or door of entry, was very familiar to the disciples. It was a favorite theme of the prophets of the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures. The Holy Spirit, through the prophet Ezekiel, promised that the false shepherds would be removed, that he himself was the good shepherd, and that he would raise up one shepherd from David who would shepherd his sheep. That's Ezekiel 34. In this powerful instruction, which is our gospel lesson for today's Mass, Jesus is telling those who heard his words that day, he is the fulfillment of that promise. He is the Messiah. But at first, some did not understand. So he clarifies it. Hear his words. In all truth, I tell you, I am the gate of the sheepfold. 
All who have come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep took no notice of them. I am the gate. Anyone who enters through me will be safe. Such a one will go in and out and will find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it to the full. He's speaking to us as well. Do we believe this? Have we invited Jesus, the Good Shepherd, to lead us, to lead our family? He's come to bring life to the full. Receive him. Enter through the gate.